My name is Gavin Evans and this is my review of Braveheart and this will be a spoiler filled review so if you haven't seen it go and watch it then come back and watch my review because I will be going in depth. This is one of those movies that I surprisingly don't have a lot to say. Like it's so weird you look at my review for the 2022 Scream movie and it's like almost 20 minutes long and then you look at the length of this review and it's probably going to be very short because I don't have a ton to say about this movie. It did win Best Picture in 1995. Lots of people love this movie and I do really like it but I don't think it's quite as good as some people say. But I do love the main story here of a man willing to fight for freedom after losing his wife. I think it's a very powerful story and it's quite inspirational in moments. Like William Wallace's story is getting told across the country and everyone has different versions of it and I really like that aspect. And I also love how this movie explores what a man should be. How there should be a certain honorable trait to him and he should be noble. And I just love seeing that, especially in the last little bit of this movie which I found to be very effective. The way this movie ends, I thought was very emotionally powerful and it ends on a very moving note. As brutal and as tough as it is to watch in moments, the emotion still comes through. And even though some people could say that final yell for freedom is cheesy, it still really works. I think this movie is incredibly well directed by Mel Gibson. I love the look of this movie. It's very well shot. And I just love how he brings this time period to life. All the production design and costumes looked really great and authentic to that time period. And I absolutely love the messiness of the action. The action is very well shot, but it never looks like it's well orchestrated action. It just looks like what it would actually look like if these two massive groups of people just started fighting in the middle of a field. There's a certain messiness to it that just allows it to feel more authentic, and I do like how brutal this movie can be in moments. Like, after some fights are done, you just see the aftermath, and you just see a field filled with dead bodies and it's really effective in that way and I love the musical score to this movie. James Horner just ugh, such an underrated composer. Not enough people talk about him but even in a movie that doesn't really impress me like Legends of the Fall, he still delivers a top-notch score. He delivers a great score with Titanic, Avatar and he delivers a great score with this movie. I just think he adds so much emotion to this movie when it's needed and just provides this movie with a certain identity that really works for the culture that's on display. And I do think this movie is able to be emotional and moving and thrilling and tense. And as heavy as this movie can be in moments, there's always some sense of levity which I always enjoy. Like there's a big battle about to happen and you feel the weight of everything but then you still got a moment where everyone's mooning the other side and it makes you laugh. I really enjoy moments like that. The entire cast does do a really good job, but let's just talk about Mel Gibson because I don't think his performance gets the credit it deserves in this movie. I don't know if he won Best Actor or not. It would be weird if he did and I said that. But still, nobody talks about his performance as much as they should because this is a top tier performance. This performance is the very definition of charisma. If anybody else was leading this movie, it could have had a bit more of a bland feel to it. It wouldn't be as easy to get invested. But Mel Gibson is just so likable and so charismatic that it's just so easy to get on board with everything regarding this movie. And I love the way this character is written with just how noble and honorable he is. And I do love his accent. I don't know how authentic it is, but I love it nonetheless. I think Catherine McCormick, she's not in this movie for much, but I do think she's really good in the short time she is present. She adds some nice warmth, and she you do buy the romance between the two of them. You've also got Angus McFadden, who plays Robert the Bruce, and I think he does an amazing job, and I think this character arc is really, really strong. Uh, everyone else is fantastic. There's a lot of actors in this movie. I don't feel like naming each one off. Brendan Gleeson's great and just so is everyone else. The cast is definitely a strong 
area of this movie, but I do have some issues with the movie as a whole. I always say the longer your movie is, the tougher I'm going to be on it. The more of my time that I commit to your movie, the more I'm going to open itself up to criticism. And I do think this movie is too long. At three hours long, you do start to feel the lengths at a certain point. And I think you could have trimmed this movie down to honestly two hours and 20 minutes. I think you could have done it. And an easy section of this movie to cut would have been the very beginning when William Wallace is just a kid. I think it could have been shortened down to like five minutes. Like just have some narration, have Mel Gibson narrate what happened to him as a kid and then go on from there. Like I understand what happened to him is important, but at the same time, you're just like, okay, let's get going. And it does, it does make it harder to get on board from the very beginning of this movie because it, you do feel a dragon in the very beginning of this movie, which is never a good thing. And I've never liked the fact that he slept with the princess. I understand why they wrote it that way and how it solves the princess as a character. I get all that, but it just doesn't work for me. I feel like they sacrificed his character in favor of hers. Because he's such an honorable guy. He talked about how much he loved his wife, how he would never love anyone else. And then the first, the next time that a woman shows him a bit of interest, he sleeps with her. I've never liked that. And my last complaint is that even though this movie does have some emotional moments, I wish some of them hit harder, mainly the inciting incident with his wife dying at the very start. You know, the guys forcing themselves on her is very disturbing, you're enraged. And then you get this action scene in the village and then he escapes and he's just like, where is she? And then she dies and I don't know, there's just something about the way that scene is put together that just kind of keeps me at a distance. The fact that he didn't see her die and we didn't see his uh, immediate reaction, it just doesn't work for me. You take a story like Last of Us Part 2, spoiler alert for that game, but when Joel dies, you feel the weight of Ellie's world come crashing down. You feel her desperation, her heartbreak, and just everything. And then you compare it to a story like this, in which the wife dies, and it's sad, but you don't feel it as much. And I just think they could have made it more emotional. But that all said, I still really enjoyed this movie. This is a damn good movie, and they just don't make them like this anymore. I think Mel Gibson directs this movie incredibly well. I think the story on display is really effective and moving in moments. I think all the performances are great, but Mel Gibson is absolutely incredible. I love the music here. I got issues, it's a little too long, but I still really like this movie. So I'm gonna go ahead and give Braveheart a 7.5 out of 10. Okay, have you seen Braveheart? What did you think about it? Let me know in the comments down below. Make sure you like, make sure you comment, make sure you subscribe. Stay tuned for some more videos soon, and Gavin out.